So last year, as some of you know from my last presentation, I gave you three things that you could do. When you come to a conference like this, it can be tremendously overwhelming. When you look at all the things that you learn, you're sometimes wondering, what can I do to bring something back to the office? I mean, right away. And that always became the challenge for me. How do I affect this immediately? Last year, I gave you three things. This year, I'm going to give you three more things that you can do starting on Monday that will immediately get you started with intelligent content, especially on the visual side. Now, the reason for this is because, you know what? You need immediate results with your managers and bosses to justify your trip. And if you're thinking big, like, you know, let's start from the perspective of a great philosophy of AI and VR. First, you create a lunar landing, and then you colonize people on Mars, right? And then we start with our program. No, this is a lot easier. It's a lot more self-contained. And you know what the best part of all of it is? Each of these three things are only two words each. So today, if I am going to give, oops, if I am going to give you any advice at all, you're going to have three things to do, two words each. If you remember six words for my presentation, I will have been successful in communicating, and you will have listened in a way that you can do something immediately back at work. The most important thing to note is the web is a visual medium. When you think about all the different mediums that we work in, very few of our communications mediums are so exclusive to one of our senses. When we think about all the things that we do, we think, this really is visual storytelling. And we only, we, people when they jump to visual storytelling on the web, they immediately go to infographics, right? They're like, oh, a visual content strategy, we need infographics. But everything is visual. Your designs are visual, your words are visual. The way you juxtapose your words and your pictures on your page, proximity matters, this is all visual. The way you pull all of it together, including your navigation, including your profile images, everything that you do is visual. Humans are visual. We think visually. We remember things. If we were explained how to change this light fixture, it would be difficult to do visual without some sort of visual representation. We are, as creatures, evolved to be visual. There was a recent study. Now, you'll see the really small print down there. Um, everything I reference, all the stats aren't like a lot of the stats that you find on, online where they're not referenced and you can't find them. And it's like, you know, uh, images on a social thread get 90% greater engagement. And then you can't find the source. In the takeaway, I've provided links. So you don't have to write it down from this. You don't have to take screenshots. All of it's there. They're all bit.ly links and everything's sourced. But there was a study among medical students. And what's fascinating is we think medical students would learn from doing. Most of them said that they learned from seeing how something was done. And very few of them learned just from auditory input. But interestingly enough, kinesthetic doing it was ranked the lowest among medical students because they thought in pictures, they heard with their ears, and they put it together. So what we have to start to understand is the way the brain works. In thinking, our brain, 30 to 60% of the part of the brain that's dealing with the sentences is devoted to visual learning. Understanding visual sensory is far more part of the brain than anything else. Our brains have evolved to be visual. And one of the things that's notable is we used to think that we had two to three seconds to capture somebody's attention on a website. Remember, there was all these studies. How quickly would people process visual information? Well, the blink of an eye is 1 100th of a second. Blink your eye in 1 100th of a second. It only takes 13 milliseconds to understand visual stimuli. That's a survival mechanism that we evolved with, right? If you blink your eye and there's a tiger coming towards you, you lost some time. But what happens is, is the ones that were able to see things more quickly evolved and survived. So our survival mechanism depended on our visual interpretation and understanding of data as it came in incredibly quickly. So there was this study from MIT, and it was called In the Blink of an Eye. And the blink of an eye said, MIT measured how quickly would people understand visual data. 13 milliseconds. It's almost not understandable, but they're able to flash an image, and people are able to recall it faster than they can actually blink their eye up and down. So the three things that we're going to talk about, we're going to break down each one of them, and then we're going to talk about what you can do Monday morning when you get back to the office. So first thing is plan consistently. One of the topics, if you listen to PNR, it's all about planning. 
right? If you came to our earlier session, we know that um, hours, uh, no, um, weeks of coding saves hours of planning, right? Weeks of coding saves hours of planning because everybody wants to just sort of get started. Let's just get started. Let's, you know, so I've heard people go, let, let, let's put tactics before strategy. I've literally heard that. Like, we'll figure it out as we go. Unfortunately, planning is hugely important when you're planning at an enterprise level. And you have to plan according to a user journey. Now, everybody's got some form of this, right? It used to be called a funnel because in the old days, media was pushed at us by monolithic news organizations that decided what news we would consume. And when you turn the page of the newspaper, they decided what you would see. Now we pull our own media. We have become amazingly good at distilling out banner ads. We have banner blindness. Now they have those video click ads on YouTube where you count down the number of seconds before you can click the ad. Play the game with your friends and see if you can remember what the video ad was before you counted down three, two, one. And you click and you can't wait. You can click fast enough. You can't even remember what that ad was, that pre-roll. And the fact of the matter is people consume the information that they want. We pull content to us. We are the media. So if we were to move things along a user journey, mine is pre-seeker, seeker, consider, active solution, and evangelist, what does that mean in a visual scenario? First and foremost, no single asset will work across the entire user journey. It's a myth, it's a brand marketing myth that we can give one message and it will matter to everybody because we evolve over time and our needs change dramatically from the very beginning all the way to the end. Let me show you how. If we were thinking about the earliest part of the user journey, the earliest part is a pre-seeker, right? We think about that as somebody who is a qualified lead. That's where we used to call them in a funnel, a qualified lead, and that's where the sales folks would be hunting and acquiring. Now, the next would be uh, when I'm starting to find out about your product, the about page, your home page. What do you sell? What is your widget? Then there's comparison. This is the most thorny one for marketers because it is the place where they compare. What's important? Is it safety? Is it price? Is it availability? Is it the color that I want? Comparison, as humans, we start to slice out different comparisons. Then we get into the details, and details in this active solution can be, you know what, I'm ready to buy, but I really want to drill down. I've made my decision, and I want more information. And then the biggest opportunity on the internet that has never existed like this before is evangelism. The ability for us to tell each other about something that we think is awesome. We don't trust marketers. In a room, we trust these others as peers, but we hate each other's advertising, we hate each other's marketing, we don't trust each other. On a scale of ranking, we are, I'm not kidding, there's lawyers, marketers, used car salesmen. We're not very high in the, rank, in the trust ranking. And the reason is, is because we're pushing message, we're trying to do things, but now in the new economy, we can create utility. We can help people. I believe that marketing is not selling. Marketing is telling. It's letting people make the decision that's best for them. So how does this look? So I'm actually looking to buy a new car. My daughter's about to turn driving age, and I'm going to have to buy a new car. So she gets my old piece of junk, and I'm getting a new car. And I like a CUV. I think they're a cool car. They drive well. There's a lot of reasons to like a CUV. So I'm a qualified lead. So what do I do? I go online and do a search. And I say, you know what, I want a CUV. And I like these, so I'm gonna look what's there. So what do Google's results look like? Well, Google shows pictures. That's, the, that's an actual search engine results page. Below it is you'll see ads from Google AdWords. Those are qualified leads. Each of the car manufacturers knows that I'm a qualified lead because I'm looking for something in their category. They bid on that ad, they place their ad there, they wanna take me to their page. So as a qualified lead, I'm just exploring. Now, I'm gonna click on one of those ads and these are three different car companies that I went directly from their ads because I'm looking for a CUV. What do they do? They take me to a visual page. Each of the car companies handles it differently and yet the same. Nissan above, they show you the two Pathfinders and the Murano, the one Pathfinder and the Murano, they give you some uh, sense of pricing. We've got Chevrolet, which gives you the three different models and Buick only has one and they show you contextually something about their brand. They are communicating to you, right? Chevy, utility, very utilitarian. White background, just the image, cropped out. The Nissan, a little bit more edgy, black and white, very stark. And then the Buick, very pastoral, showing you if you can afford this house, you can afford this car, right? So there is already, in a sense, in an about page measurement on your website, this should be probably the most important page because they're just trying to find out what it is you sell. 
people are automatically filtering themselves in and out. They're trying to get information quickly, and they've already filtered out 20 brands before they get to the next stage, which is comparison. Now they want to make a comparison. This is where most marketers can't deal with what they have to do, right? People are making comparison. I like the two cars. These are the three cars. This is literally something from Edmunds where I can put in three cars or four cars and compare them. Price, gas mileage, safety ratings, all the different features and benefits. Further filtering down. I want to filter out. There's too many choices for me to make. I need to filter out. And I begin to filter down. Now, if I go to each one of those car companies, they also have content that is comparison based. Top one. I think that's Buick. So Buick on the top image is saying to me, we have your CUV that you want, we have third row seating, and we have tumble forward seats. I can now immediately go, well, let me check, that's actually a cool feature, let me check to see who else has that. And they did that visually with one image. They didn't need movies, they didn't need VR, they didn't need, I just needed a quick image, right? Further in, I see that third row seating because now I'm starting to think, I really like that third row seating. I have a big family. And what I want to be able to do is say, it's safe, it's big. I like those interiors. I'm making quick comparisons. And I'm filtering down, filtering, filtering, filtering until I get to the next stage, which is details. Eventually, I settle on the Buick. And I go, Buick's cool, man. I haven't bought a Buick in a long, long time. I'd love to buy an American car. Now that I've got my Buick, I want to know what colors it comes in. That, that's an actual like plumish color. And I thought, that is a really cool color. Not for me, but you know, kind of a cool color. And that's the question I'm asking. As a, as a person who now is committed to look into this, I'd like to note at no point have I stepped into a car dealership. I'm doing all of my research online. I don't want you to sell me. I don't want to be sales or marketed to. I want to consume my own information. And they're providing all the information that I need. Now, furthermore, at a certain point, I might become an actual Buick customer. I might make that purchase. In the event that I make that purchase, what becomes important to me in my user journey? Maintenance. What happens if something breaks? Warranty. I want to know. And Buick has done a beautiful job of visually answering my questions. Do they do that? Yes, they do. These are the parts that we use. AC Delco, got it. Like to me, this is actually important. I can become a Buick owner for years and continue to be in this area. See, I, I used to work in a car dealership and the idea was you didn't want to sell a car one time to one person. You wanted to sell a family of cars to that person's entire family. That's a customer, right? You got people that buy something from you and you got customers. And there's a big difference, and you're trying to nurture that. Now, the biggest opportunity that I see missing, and I'm going to add a moment of tension here. Mm. You guys hang on every word with me here. OK, this is where we talk about this all the time in social, evangelists, key opinion leaders, people who are driving online influence. And yet, how well are you aligned to give those people opportunities to share their enthusiasm? Back in the day, I'm going to date myself, when I bought a Saturn, brand new, I came out and the dealership came with the general manager, the salesperson, a couple other people. They came out and they handed me my keys and took a photo. A week later, I had to go back and pick up the photo, returning to the dealership. They checked out my car, made sure everything was good. Great reinforcement. What you'll notice here are people taking pictures of themselves and posting it in their social network that they just bought a car. The missed opportunity here is that the dealership isn't doing this. You know what would be a great thing for a dealership to do? Right after you buy your car, you're, <laughs> you're never happier with your car. You got that new car smell. It's cleaner than you can ever clean it. It looks, smells, tastes, everything's great. You're so enthused. You're ready to turn the key. What if the dealership made it easy? What if they took your picture and put it on their page and enabled you to share it from there? What if they put their right branding in there? No branding, no branding. Accidental branding just because she happened to have it there. But you know what they're missing? They're missing that shared passion and enthusiasm. When you think about your brand, are you making it easy for your enthusiasts to share content about you? Your infographic may be great, but it's mostly your marketing message. If it's mostly your marketing message, who wants to send somebody else's marketing message out? They want it to be about them. If you're ever going to enable social sharing and passionate enthusiasm and evangelism, you have to make it about them. You have to create that opportunity that they're the star of their own social network. The idea that they're going to share your infographic, I don't know, man. It's kind of not feeling real to me. Social is all about being real. And what you want to do is make sure that that realness comes through and you can help 
facilitate that opportunity. And it might be visual, and it might show up on their Facebook timeline, and you might not have as much control or analytics about it, but at the end of the day, you're helping them sell your product.